when a dark secret is uncovered. I found witchcraft books. I found spell casting books. This stuff is creepy. Do you think he's really into this? And this necklace with the serpent around it. A family comes face to face with evil. I turn around. I see this girl standing there. She said, we're going to get you and kill you. Can they be saved? No way. Hey, Dad! He's fine. Dad, it's going to get you! Before falling under its spell. I see this human shadow, and I was absolutely terrified. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see... Someone's in my room. ...and the things we fear, there are doors when they are opened. Nightmares become reality. In March 2012, nursing home resident William Smith sits in a near catatonic state, oblivious to his surroundings. Hi, William. It's Amanda. When his relative, Amanda Morrison, comes for a visit, he doesn't appear to recognize her. William, he was a different kind of person in our family. He was uh, more recluse and kept to himself, and um, we didn't see him that much. He ended up having to go into a nursing home, and the diagnosis was Meineke Korsakoff syndrome, which is swelling of the brain from uh, years of alcoholism. Here, I brought something to cheer you up. David made it for you. See? Amanda also has important news for William. So, uh, we're going to start working on your house next week. William's finances have bottomed out. To pay for his care, Amanda explains her family's plan to clear out his home and place it on the market. William? You do understand all this, right? William? You're hurting me. William, stop. Stop. Nurse! Are you right? While William's reaction is alarming, Amanda is determined to help him. A few weeks later, she, along with her husband, Nate, and two children, get to work on his home. Hey guys, it's gonna be fun. We'll be like a team, we'll get to work together. Yes, we'll we will. Separate the jobs. William didn't have a lot of support from other members of the family. We had done a lot of work on our own house, so we felt that it wouldn't be too much of a project to take on the responsibility. Can I help paint? Of course you can, as long as you follow directions. David is very much a helper. He, he likes to do everything from fixing a toilet to painting. Aaliyah's not interested in fixing up things. She's very artistic. She was very super girly, happy-go-lucky. Hey, do you need an invite? Come on. Aaliyah. Let's go. Hey, what are you doing? Sorry. Come on, stop texting. Let's get out of here. Kimberly wants to know if I can go to the mall. I don't know. I guess if you help with the house. OK. OK. But David better not get paint on me. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my god. The house was visibly dark. All the windows were literally sealed shut, and then there were layers of old, dusty curtains closed over every single window. The walls were badly stained with nicotine from years of smoking. The carpets were filthy. Where do you begin? This is gross. I'm going to go back to the car. Uh, Aaliyah, come on now. We promised William that we were going to help. William's house is, like, dirty. There's stains and. Just everything was gross and all over the place and unorganized. It was very gloomy and dark, and the walls were ripped up. These TVs don't even work. Honey, I guess just 
Divide and conquer? Yeah, we'll clear a path back this way. Okay. All right. We'll start here. Kitty box again. I thought, I can't give up. I can't stop what I signed up for. I can't stop helping him get all this done. I went into one really large box and I found witchcraft books, I found spell casting books. And wrapped up in a cloth was this gold-colored necklace that was kind of heavy. It was a, a staff with the serpent around it, but it wasn't the medical symbol. It was definitely bad and not good. Nate? Nate, can you come here, Nate? Hey. Hey. Nate, look, look, look at this stuff. Look at these books. This stuff is creepy. Do you think he's really into this? Or was? Oh, you know what? Put it back in a box. Don't worry about it. No, what, what about this necklace? My husband's not like me. Everything's, like, logical. He thought it was a little bit weird. Just, hmm. But he didn't think much of it because he's real rational. It's been a long day. I'm going to get the kids, and we'll just call it quits, all right? I know that William was a strange sort of guy, but they're just books. Clea. Probably right. We're going to call it quits, OK? OK. All right. I'm going to turn the lights out. All right. You going to get David? Can we get some pizza on the way home? Sure. Over the next few months, Nate and Amanda renovate and clean the house. As it nears completion and is ready to be put up for sale, Amanda pays a visit to William. Hey, William. You're going to be so excited. We're nearly finished the house. Look, I brought photos. The last time I went to visit William, I had brought photos of all the work that we did in an envelope, and I showed him how everything had been changed and how much better you know, certain things looked. Look at this. Ta-da, fresh paint. He was interested at first and kind of leaning forward and squinting and looking. I hope you don't mind, but some of this stuff did go to Goodwill. His whole face changed. Look at this, we cleared all of that out. Yeah. You did this to me! What are, you, what are you talking about? He started to get meaner, and he said he blamed me because he ended up in a nursing home. You put me in here? Get out of my life. Get out of my house, you or else. Get out. It really upset me that he would feel that way after everything that I did for him and pretty much broke my heart.
At Williams, Nate is putting the finishing touches on the house before it's put up for sale. Amanda? Amanda had left, and I was at William's house in the middle of the day. I had a feeling that I was being watched. As Nate Morrison prepares to sell the home of his wife's ill relative, he can't shake the feeling he's not alone. I turned around and saw <laughs> a tall, shadowy figure. It looked like it was a human shape, only much taller and much darker. It was not friendly. He looked completely stunned. And I thought, oh my God, is my husband having a heart attack or something? Because he looked visibly white. I saw something. Oh, no. But... It was this big uh, shadow. And it was, it was huge. And it was shaped like a person. OK. What was it? It was something. OK? Look, I, I, I'm out of here. I got to go. OK. I got to go. We can leave. It, it's fine. My husband's very analytical. And to see him scared, to know that he actually saw something, was very scary. Amanda and Nate leave the house in the hands of William's new guardian and resume their normal routine. To this day, they have no idea if it ever sold. Even though things didn't work out the way I had hoped with William, I had good intentions but I was very glad to be over with it. The responsibilities and obligations had been weighing on us. It was nice to not have a whole other house to take care of. But little do the Morrisons know, their ordeal is far from over. Eight-year-old David plays with a secret souvenir taken during William's house cleaning. I found this necklace with a snake around it. It had lots of scales. I thought it was really cool looking, and I thought I could show my friends. I wanted to keep it aware to school. Hey, you still awake? Lights out, okay? It's a school night.
Nate, no, Nate, wake what, up. What, what, what? I think something's wrong with David. Sweetie? Mom! Was, What's it wrong? Was, Calm down. It was, Calm down. Calm down. It was a... Uh, hey. He was crying or yelling, saying that he had a nightmare. I was very scared, but I can't really remember the details. I just knew that it felt very real to me. It sounds like it was just, just a bad dream. No, no, it was... I figured that if he wasn't remembering, it couldn't be that serious. And kids having nightmares is, is a fairly common thing. David, the last time you were in front of a campfire, you were in diapers. What was I? That's right. Over the next few weeks, while the family deals with David's recurring nightmares, they begin to notice something else. His sister, Aaliyah, is growing withdrawn. Aaliyah was a very bubbly, social, butterfly kind of child, and she started to pull away a little bit. Aaliyah, are you going to join us? Aaliyah. Can't you see that I'm busy? Whoa. God. Sorry. Just leave me alone. Ah. Aaliyah's parents are shocked by her behavior and hope it's temporary. We figured it was a phase that she would eventually move out of. But Aaliyah's anxiety only grows worse. When I was in my room, I felt like something was there. Felt like I was being watched. I really didn't feel like myself. Something in my brain was telling me all this crazy stuff that I usually would never do. Like something that was trying to control me. Morrison has been worried about her 12-year-old daughter, Aaliyah. Aaliyah. Sweetie, it's time to get up, OK? It's time for school. Aaliyah. Aaliyah? <laughs> Honey! Aaliyah, what happened? She was shaking and she was crying and she was very distressed. I knew it wasn't like a joke. She was like really, truly scared. I saw the words, help me, carved into her headboard. Oh my God. She started crying, and she says, I don't even know why that just happened. It was like she blacked out. It's going to be OK, all right? We started to become more concerned that this was a more serious, major depression that she was going through. All right? Come on. Come on. Doctor, we're scared. Her parents meet with a psychiatrist who confirms Aaliyah is suffering from depression. This should help. 
So take this twice a day, and hopefully in a month or so, we should see a significant improvement. To have a child who's dealing with depression or some kind of affliction like this, it makes you feel completely powerless. Everything's going to be OK. It was hard when my mom and dad and my brother were worried about me because I felt like I was a bad person for making anyone upset. Get through this, I promise. In the months that follow, the family focuses their love and attention on Aaliyah. Oh, I got it. I think it looks nice. Yeah. You like it? Mm -hmm. The room has a lot more color. It makes a big difference. Brighten things up a little bit. Since Aaliyah was feeling uncomfortable in her room and to give her a feeling of a fresh start, I decided I'm going like to go buy some supplies and I'm going to change around her room. Now, if we could just get you to pick up your room. It's not dirty. It's just organized differently, Mom. Oh, Aaliyah. It's fine. I like everything where it is. Aaliyah. What? Did you take this? No, what is it? David! David, get in here right now! Yes? David, did you take this from William's house? I thought it was cool. Cool? You don't take things that don't belong to you. I've told you this. I'm sorry. As a mom, I was kind of upset that David would go into the boxes and just start, like, rifling through things that weren't his. I didn't think much of it. I decided to get rid of it. Months pass, and despite taking prescribed medication, Aaliyah's depression only deepens. It started to get to the point where she started to wear a lot of dark clothing, black clothing, like head to toe. The fear of possibly losing your child to something like this, we were very, very worried about her safety and how it was going to change her, how it was going to affect her, what we could do to make it stop. I felt like I was trapped from my depression. I was really scared. I thought I was going crazy. What? With no way out, Aaliyah becomes a prisoner of her dark thoughts. It was like the middle of the night, and I started hearing my name called. But I thought, you know, it's just in my head. Thirteen-year-old Aaliyah Morrison has been plagued with anxiety and fear. 
I felt like a lot angrier, so I didn't talk to anyone. I just wanted to do nothing and just stay in my house. I thought I was going crazy. An evil force appears to be controlling her thoughts. I see this like girl standing there. She had black hair that was kind of covering her face. She was saying like, we're gonna get you and kill you. Mom! It's in my room. I saw it. Please, you can't let it get me. It's coming to get me. Mom, please, don't let it get me. What, what is it? What did you see? Aaliyah came into the family room crying. She said there was a black shadow that rose up out of my floor and was right in front of my bed and it said my name. She was really, truly scared. Where's your brother? David, David. What's going on? Come here, come here. Sit with your mom. Is she OK? Dad! He's fine. Dad, is she OK? Yeah. OK. Amanda. What is all this? Come here, look at this. She's sketching all of these. Hey, what are we gonna do? I don't know. Our concern immediately was that these are hallucinations and voices is a classic indication that she's developing a psychosis greater than what she was originally having. Amanda and I were very afraid that we were going to lose her. The family takes Aaliyah back to the psychiatrist. I've talked to Aaliyah for several hours, and I've determined that she does not have any type of schizophrenia or delusion. He was convinced that this was not a development of a new mental illness, but something that he couldn't explain. I do think that we should change her medicine as her depression is still severe. Then what is she seeing? I don't know, but I can tell you, she believes that she's seeing something in her room and her fear is very real. This was not a figment of her imagination or the product of an illness, but was an actual physical manifestation that she was seeing, and her fear was real. The whole mood in our house started changing. It was taking away our peace, and the amount of stress quadrupled. We did feel as parents that we were failing at times. We were doing everything that we could to help her and support her. It was putting a lot of wear and tear on our marriage, our family life. It wasn't a very good time. David? David?
Da David? For months, Amanda Morrison didn't know what to believe when her husband and daughter claimed they were seeing an unexplainable, terrifying entity. Until now. I see this human shadow growing taller and taller. And I was absolutely terrified. Baby, baby. Nate, Nate, Nate. Wait, Nate, Nate. It's real. It's okay. It's real. I saw it. I saw that thing. The, the thing that you what? saw. What? I saw that shadow. The, the thing. The, it's here. It's real. My rational mind said, it can't possibly be that. My rational mind didn't let me accept this immediately. The things that my family had been experiencing weren't separate. They were all connected to this dark energy. That was like a time-changing moment right there. We really need to figure out what is going on. Not knowing where to turn, Amanda searches for someone who can perform a house blessing. She finds Samantha Harris of the Michigan Paranormal Research Association. I'm a demonologist, published author, and a paranormal investigator. Intuitively, I was picking up on a lot of heaviness. There was a lot of negativity in the home. It was really obvious that the Morrison family was experiencing some sort of strains and stressors in their family life. When I walked into Aaliyah's room, I was instantly hit with a heaviness. I could sense it very clearly that some sort of demonic or negative entity is actually in the room with me. It's here. What are you talking about? I believe there is a demonic presence in your home. I feel it the strongest here in Aaliyah's room. How did this happen? Is there some way that you could have brought it with you? Is there someone in your family um, involved with the occult or the dark arts? We recently found some things at a relative's. The more Amanda tells Samantha about the books and objects she uncovered inside her relative's home, the more convinced Samantha becomes that William was involved in satanic rituals. Amanda found this box that included um, a demonic sort of necklace. David actually took this necklace without telling anybody. I think that action released this demonic entity into their home. When Samantha told us that all of the bad, negative, dark stuff came from William's house, I felt like I unintentionally sabotaged my family. Like, I did something wrong. I felt guilt. Why is this thing after Aaliyah? Unfortunately, she's more at risk. It's really common for demonic entities to focus and target, actually, adolescents. Aaliyah is a perfect prime target. Basically, it's because of their energy. They're at a spiritual crossroads. 
this demonic entity really targeted her and I think was trying to will her to the dark side. We need to do a blessing immediately. At this point, it was our last option. It was our last resort. OK, we're going to pray now. And you can join in as you feel comfortable. And the only thing that's important is that you remain focused, OK? OK. OK. Samantha got everybody involved. It was a family activity to cleanse the house. Heavenly Spirit, I bow in praise and worship before you. I claim the protection of the light for my family, my finances, my home, my spirit, soul, and body. I surrender myself completely in every area of my life to you. I take a stand against all the workings of darkness and negativity. It really felt like my family and I were fighting to reclaim the house and the prayer was a battle cry. Heavenly Spirit, I bow and worship the praise before you. I cover myself with the white light and protection of God. I looked up, and the light above our table was flickering. My finances, my home, my spirit, my soul, and body. Leo was kind of having a difficult time concentrating on this prayer and starting to feel ill. In every area of my life to you, I take a stand against all forces of darkness and negativity. As we were saying the prayer, I felt like the demon's telling me, like, don't say it, don't get rid of me. Heavenly Spirit, I bow and worship. The demonic entity was trying to distract her or to claim her back. I cover myself with the white light and protection of God. For more haunting, visit destinationamerica.com. The Morrison family is attempting to spiritually clean their house of a demon that is after their 13-year-old daughter, Aaliyah. I claim the protection of the light for my family, my finances, my home, my spirit, my soul, and body. We knew that something was trying to get to Aaliyah and take control of her, and we were terrified. I command it to leave. Heavenly Spirit, I bow in worship and praise before you. I cover myself with the white light against all the workings of darkness and negativity. Keep going. I cover myself with the white light. Paranormal investigator Samantha Harris urges Aaliyah to stay strong. Aaliyah, pray with me. Aaliyah, we worship and pray Come back. But the demon keeps beckoning her to the dark side. The demonic entity was affecting Aaliyah kind of as its last chance to try to claim her back or to somehow have power over her. I said, no, I want my house back, and I want to be able to sleep in my room at night. So I told like the demon in my head, no, just go away. After we were done with the prayer, it felt like a bunch of weight was lifted off. It's gone. I don't feel it anymore. Mom, it's gone. When the house cleansing was done, there was just a brighter feel, almost like, like we had cleaned the windows and more sunlight was coming in. We were all just kind of happier. It really did seem to, to make a difference right away. Thank you so much. You gave me my family back. That's the moment that I felt like I got her back. That's when I had my like exhale moment where I'm like, oh, it's 
really gone. We knew it was all over and all this demon stuff can go away and we can live a happy ending. Okay, um, it's your turn. To the left. Okay. Uh -huh. That's some no. reaction. Oh, I thought he won. I thought it was over right <laughs> there. We haven't had any paranormal experiences since the house cleansing. OK, so it's my turn. Do you have any aces? No, I don't. Go fish. It feels much more peaceful. David said that his nightmares have stopped. OK, uh, ace, please. Yeah. Oh, thank you. he's thank been you. waiting for that one. Yeah. My uh -huh. wife was happy now. Everything's good and back to normal. Mom, do you have a queen? Aaliyah is sleeping much better. She's sleeping in her room. She's not waking up and crying. I don't think I'll ever get over the experience. I think it's probably changed all of us. And to be scared of something like that, that you have no control over, you don't know what to do in that moment. <laughs> it's still affecting me today. I guess in the back of my mind, I'm just praying to God that it just doesn't ever bother us again, you know? I'm still kind of on guard. I know now that there really is good and evil and that you can actually see it and it's something that can actually come into your home and bother you. Before all this happened, I didn't really believe in, like, demons or ghosts. Now I believe that if you let them, they'll just make your life miserable. You two are ganging up. Doggy dog world. As for William, who's dealing with black magic is believed to have conjured the demon in the first place, the Morrisons never saw him again. <laughs> Probably because it's his last one. It, it looks like, like something that. suspicious is happening <laughs> right there. Ah, but, you know, I can see right through that card. Can you? I can. I know. Uh, Aaliyah? Aaliyah? Sweetie? Are you OK? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. It's just something you can't really get over or forget. It'll still always be there. An evil force hey. attacks a family, stalking its prey one by one. It looks like a horror movie, and it's you. She was not the girl that I knew. Who will survive? Be gone in the name of Jesus! And who will die? There was a sense of hatred that filled up the room. And this usually accompanies the manifestation of something of great evil. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm trying to keep you from hurting yourself. Get away from me or I'll kill you. The year is 2010. For Cindy Sauer, Social Circle Georgia has always held a special place in her heart. Social Circle is a typical southern small town. Everybody knows everybody, and most people are related in some way or the other. I got to know people and got to know the town. It has secrets. Recently, Cindy's husband, Jim, tragically passed away, leaving her to raise their teenage daughter, Chastity. Hey, let me help you with that. Thanks, babe. I got fresh peaches to make your favorite cobbler. You know that was Dad's favorite. Yeah, I know. When I found out my dad 
died. I didn't know what to do because he was my best friend. Oh. After months of mourning, Cindy and Chastity are starting to get back on their feet. To help with the sad feelings, we just sat around and told about the good times with my dad. It just made us feel better about what was going on. I never had a regular job when we were married. His income was the primary income. So after he passed away, that evaporated. Cindy is now the lead singer of a local blues and country band, working nights and weekends to make ends meet. Hey, where's your gig tonight, Mom? Down at the tavern. We're playing the main stage tonight. My mom being in a band was exciting. I was happy for her because she thought she was going places. I loved going to see her perform. Can I come? Sorry, sweetie. Not until you're 21. Being in the band was everything I'd always thought it would be. It was exciting to be the front man. I think that's probably the first time that I felt like I was in my element, like I belonged. Do you mind grabbing the rest of the groceries from the car? Sure, Mom. I had just gotten back from running some errands. forcefully grab me like two hands. Chastity, don't sneak up on me like that. I turned around to see if there was someone behind me, and there wasn't. As much as it startled me, I just kind of put it on the back burner and ignored it. Thanks, honey. Listen, I've got to start getting ready. Um, would you mind putting the rest of these away? I love you. As Cindy gets ready for work, she is haunted by a painful memory. A photo of her late husband evokes feelings of sadness and confusion. He was an alcoholic for a very long time, since before I knew him. It was very difficult to watch him go through that. Jim had dreams to someday rebuild their marriage but these plans ended after he took his own life. You always look for answers when someone commits suicide. To this day, his motive for taking his life remains a mystery. I looked up. And there was a man standing in the backyard. At first, I thought it really could be my dad. I wasn't completely sure of what to think at that point. What's wrong? Are you hurt? <laughs> it took me a second to gather myself to tell her what happened. He was there. I saw him. Who, Chastity? Who was there? Dad. He, he was out by the shed. It was scary because I knew my father was dead. I felt it couldn't be him. And just it brought back the memories of our relationship. Honey, are you sure? It was probably a neighbor. I swear it was him. He just looked different. She's a pretty stoic person. So for something to affect her, like that, it has to be significant. OK, I'll take a look. To put her daughter's mind at ease, Cindy checks out the backyard. Hello? I was hoping that maybe she had imagined it. Somebody there? And she just saw something that looked like him. I just looked around. Hello? To try to see if I could see what Somebody she there? had told me about. And I didn't see anything. I went out to the shed. But then Cindy stumbles upon a clue. A lug nut from her husband's tool shed. He was a mechanic. 
I can't tell you how many times I helped him change a tire or work on a car, and that lug nut was one that he left out there. Cindy is unnerved by this experience, but figures it must be a message from her late husband. Jim? Is that you? I thought that it was him. I thought that Jim had thrown this to get my attention. If you can hear me, I just want to let you know that Chastity and I are doing fine. You can pass on now. I thought that he was just saying, it's OK, and, and I'm still here. And that's what I tried to put in my mind so that I could deal with it. Although Cindy knows her daughter is in no harm, she decides it's best for Chastity to spend the night with a friend. Don't worry, we'll be out of this house soon. I just need to save a little more money. <laughs> Cindy knows it will be a long road before they can fully recover from the death of a loved one. But she's hopeful that life will soon return to normal. My mom's a great mom. She's there for me. She stands up for me. She's my best friend. Over the next several months, life is finally starting to turn around. Cindy has started dating again. After meeting Jason Britt, a former pastor, she's confident that he's the one. She really wasn't looking for anybody at all. And honestly, I didn't think I was either, but we just kind of grew closer and closer together. And it was amazing once you figure out how much you have in common with somebody, how much time you want to spend around them. Hey, do you want another one? Sure. Hey, who's there? At first, I honestly thought somebody had come up into the yard, and I, I was thinking, who is over there by the shed? And then when I noticed there was nothing there, I knew something odd had happened. Hey, who were you yelling at? I thought I saw someone snooping around your backyard. Really? Maybe it was just a shadow or something. Why don't we go inside? That evening. What was that? It's just the movie. No, wait, wait a minute. Turn it down for a second. Listen, did you hear that? It sounds like your air conditioner or something. Stay put, let me answer it. I went to the front door, opened it, and there was nobody there. there. Listen, do you believe in the supernatural? Why? You think it was a ghost? I've been seeing some weird things lately. Chastity, too. I think the spirit of my late husband might be trying to contact us. It felt like a weight was lifted off my shoulders when I could finally not just tell him what was going on, but that he could understand what was going on. You must think I'm crazy. Not at all. I had a similar experience when I was younger. I find the supernatural exciting. Jason shared with me that he had also had experiences with 
the paranormal when he was a child. That really hit home with me. Me too. I, I used to explore old graveyards with my brother when we were kids. So, you ever been ghost hunting? No. Well, Halloween is coming up. Want to check out some real haunted houses? <laughs> sure. People don't just say, hey, let's go ghost hunting. So, it was really cool that, that it was something he was interested in doing. Later that night, Chastity has a terrifying nightmare about her father's suicide. He was sitting on the edge of his bed, crying. I could hear it. It felt real. And then it just kind of appeared. It was evil. It was there to harm. couldn't move. I could just stare at it. No, my dad, no! by a terrifying nightmare, Chastity now believes that her father did not simply kill himself. It's okay, Chastity, it's okay. It was just a bad dream, honey. No, um, no, it wasn't. It, it was real. Well, what was it? It was, um, this, this dark, this dark figure, like a, a dark, a dark man. It was there when Dad killed himself. I felt like it was evil, and it had a part in what took place with my father. Cindy is starting to worry about her daughter's well-being. She wonders if she's made the right decision about continuing to live in the house. Why don't we go out for a bit? There's that diner around the corner that's open all night. Come on, a milkshake always cheers you up. With everything that had happened, the dreams and the seeing things, we just decided after she'd seen that, to just get out of the house for a while. Plagued by the memories of the past, Cindy is determined to find a new home for her family. While house hunting one afternoon, Cindy makes a wrong turn. Now lost on a dead-end road, she stumbles upon an old abandoned house. I looked at it and I was like, wow. It just struck me. It, it like drew me in and I thought, I've got to get in the house. It's the week of Halloween, and seeing this abandoned house gives Cindy an idea. Jason, hi. I was just driving around, and oh, you're not gonna believe this. Hold on, let me send you a picture. It just looked like the classic haunted house. It had this air of mystery. It almost had a presence. I was really intrigued by it. Got it? It was just a creepy looking house like you'd see in some, you know, horror movie. So are you up for some ghost hunting this weekend? We gotta check this out. It's like, we've gotta get in here, so I knew that he would be as excited as I was. But this excitement will soon turn to fear. That weekend, Cindy and Jason return to the abandoned house. Hold on. Armed with a camera and an audio recorder, okay. All right. they hope to collect evidence of paranormal activity. Ready? Are you freaking out? No. All right. All right. Let's do this. This is so cool. Wow. I gotta get 
this. Chastity is oh. going to flip. Did you hear that? What? A car. Somebody's here. Come on. So we made our way back around to the other side of the house where we were parked. And there was no car. It was making noises all around. Small branches, bushes, they, they were all just moving. Everything was moving. I was shaking, my, my teeth were chattering. I was cold and I just wanted in the car. Did you see that? Oh yeah, what is that? I started seeing something just out of my peripheral vision and he saw it too, just kind of darting around. It felt like it was all around us and there was no getting away, like being trapped. It felt exactly like something was going to pounce. Into the car, now. And that thing just came straight at me. You, you could just feel it, just like, it was like a train. Cindy? I got in the car and he got in and we took off. Finally, away from the abandoned house, Cindy and Jason stopped to catch their breath. That was intense, don't you think? Cindy? Cindy? I knew that there was something inhuman inside me. There was something evil. And it wanted to pull me out of the car and take me somewhere. Who are you? Tell me your name! At that moment, it had control of me. And there was nothing I could do. Tell me your name! And I'm thinking, why is he asking me these questions? Tell me your name! After a spiritual attack, Jason relies on prayer to save Cindy's life. Pray, Cindy. You have got to pray. Lord Jesus. Come on, say it. Lord Jesus. And I was just trying to say Jesus, and I couldn't say it. And I thought, I don't know how long it took me. There's this, this person that you love and you care deeply for, and there's something unseen that's attacking them. You feel powerless. It's enough to kind of drive you mad. Finally, the power of prayer releases Cindy. At that point, okay. I didn't realize the extent of it. It's OK. You're going to be OK. I just thought that we had come across something that was really bad and that it had chased us down. Promise me. We'll never go back there again. Agree. We made a pact after that night to never go back to that house and to stay as far away from it as we could. That next day was very hazy. I was really drained. It was almost like I was just kind of floating by. Slowly, Cindy's demeanor begins to change. Mom. Once a caring and sweet mother, Mom. Cindy is now hostile Mom. and irritable. What? Take a chill pill, Mom. I just wanted to see if I could have some money so I could go to the movies with Steven. I don't care what you do. My mom started changing. She went from the quiet, tender, nice mom to a very irritable, angry, depressing person. Just get out of here, now! It was not at all like me to have these bouts of rage. And I knew that this was just not coming from me. 
She would yell and scream and say hurtful things. It was just like what I've seen with my father. Cindy knows that someone or something is controlling her mind, but she is powerless to stop it. To ease her fears, Cindy asks Jason to spend the night. There's the North Star there. She's safe for now, right but there. not for long. You see the little dipper? It's just at the end of the handle. Suddenly, the dark figure appears before her. Did, did you see that? I felt something felt evil. Oh, no. Ah! Jason! Jason, get it off me! Cindy? Are you all right? Whatever came over there knocked her backwards. She hit with such force on the back of her head, I thought, she's going to have a concussion. Oh. Are you all right? It's here. I know. Cindy realizes that the dark figure has been following her, just as Chastity suspects. This entity may have played a role in her husband's death. I began to think that this thing definitely had an influence on him committing suicide. And knowing Jim like I did, I just don't feel like that he would just have done that by himself. It, it began to kind of make sense that this thing had a hand in it. This is the thing that killed my husband. I'm, I'm certain of it. And now it's come for me. Not if I can help it. It's hard to accept that your worst nightmare hasn't ended. That night, Cindy and Jason discussed the recent attack. Whatever had attacked her that night was big. It was almost like there was a hierarchy, a rank or a file, something to it. Come on, say it! This thing was playing for keeps. Jesus! I think you could be possessed. What? How can you possibly know that? When I was a pastor, I dealt with several cases of possession. After all these things happened, he shared with me that this was not the first time he dealt with these things. Despite Jason's training in the church, he knows that his best efforts would not be enough against an evil of this magnitude. We need to find some experts to come help you. But at the mere mention of seeking help, the entity fights back. Such pride he has. I could hear this thing, and it would torment Jason through me. It knew him enough to know what his weaknesses were. His arrogance will be his downfall. For more A Haunting, go to DestinationAmerica.com. Fearing that her family is in danger, Cindy contacts Roswell, Georgia Paranormal Investigations. Assistant Director Dan Bernstein and Michelle Lowe begin the investigation with a walk through the house. I'm a lead investigator, but I'm also one of the psychic or sensitives in the group. When I first walked in the house, it just seemed a little darker. It was not like other investigations that we've done in the past. As Michelle approaches the bedroom, she suddenly feels uneasy. Then, Dan notices a spiking on the EMF meter, suggesting he is in the presence of spiritual activity. I immediately felt her husband who committed suicide. I felt his presence very strongly, almost like he was guarding. But guarding what? They hope to find answers as to why this entity is tormenting them. After the walkthrough, the team begins their investigation with an EVP session. Is anyone here? Make a noise if you are present. But then, 
A familiar sound chills Cindy to the bone. Did you hear something? That was when things started to escalate. I knew that it was there. I felt it. Do you know this is not your house? This is Cindy's house. And as soon as he asked that question, it attacked me. Are you okay, Cindy? <laughs> I was scared because I couldn't do anything. I couldn't help her. I knew she was being taken over at that point. It was terrifying. It was nothing I've ever seen before. It was pure hate. It was not Cindy anymore. Cindy is once again possessed. The entity inside of her has taken control of her body, bent on destroying anything in its path. Her eyes turned black. It was a face of hate. Leave now. I command you to leave. I remember Dan being there. I did not like him. I wanted to do something bad to him. I wanted to hurt him. I want to talk to Cindy. Are you there, Cindy? I was trying to talk. I was trying to tell them I was there, and it just wouldn't let me through. Mom! The only thing I could think to do was pray. I thought she was going to pounce on me. I felt like I was literally facing real, true, pure evil. I was scared to death. I'm going to count to three, and Cindy will come back. One, two. Three. Dan weakens the entity's control, but only temporarily. In the investigations that I've done in the past, I've never dealt with anything like this. There's been some things that were maybe a little dark, but never in the almost 10 years that I've been investigating have I ever dealt with anything like this, ever. I think you need an exorcism. I have a friend who's a priest. You, you OK with that? I'll try anything. To banish the entity once and for all, Cindy must seek religious intervention. That night, Jason stays with Cindy as she awaits help from the priest. Jason's only hope is that God will protect them. He secretly prays for Cindy's safety. He is beseeching your God. Stop praying. I'm not saying anything. Yes, you are. Elle est là, sans gêne, croix dans mes yeux. Why are you saying that? It's not me. It's something channeling through me. Jason recognizes the words as Aramaic, an ancient language and root of Hebrew and Arabic. He knows this from his background in theology. It means your God bows to me. The next morning, Cindy feels even more hopeless. She is frightened that this evil presence is growing stronger. But then her darkest fears become reality. The demon takes control of her body. I actually stared into the face of this thing and watched what looks like a like a horror movie, you know, right in front of you, and it's you, but it doesn't feel like you. Jesus, help me. Cindy! Cindy! Oh, Holy Father, I ask that you protect Cindy from this evil. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As Jason begins to pray, suddenly the entity lets go. Oh, it's gonna be okay. The priest will be here soon. But not soon enough. I don't wanna do this. Please don't make me do this. Baby, they're coming here to help you. Don't move, they're here. Can you sit here while I do this? Okay. As she nervously awaits the priest's arrival, the demon continues to grow stronger. It wanted to cut me open. I remember it wanted to cut my leg open and just dig in. 
and just see what was in there. Just like a, like a toy. But Cindy doesn't have time to hurt herself. The team is just outside. Michelle is accompanied by her colleagues, Reverend Darren Simpson and Claudia Lee. Our director and lead investigator. Well, thank you for coming. Cindy's inside. She's a bit nervous about the exorcism. That's to be expected. It's a demon trying to fight back, keep us away. Best thing is to keep her calm. The evidence that Michelle had gathered was so good that I was able to take that evidence to my bishop, my presiding bishop, and he was able to make a judgment and give me permission to go and perform an exorcism. Michelle can already tell that something is wrong. She senses the presence of evil. It was conveyed to me, if you go back in the house, you will regret it. And so that weighed heavily on me the whole week before we went back. Cindy's inside. She's a bit nervous about the exorcism. Jason debriefs with the team and Father Darren before starting the exorcism. We were standing outside. We all of a sudden heard this loud crash on the inside of the house. At that moment, we just knew we were in for it. appears to have taken control of Cindy's body. That's literally when all hell broke loose. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm trying to keep you from hurting yourself. Get away from me or I'll kill you. I wanted to kill him, but at the same time, I wanted him to help me. But it wanted to kill him. Every time she looked at me with, with that look, just like a cold, dead stare of vitriol and hatred, she was not the girl that I knew. Jason, I need Cindy seated in a chair. The energy was very heavy. It was so intense, and there was such a dark feeling to it. That I really thought I was looking at evil, and I was very, very frightened. There was a sense of hatred that filled up the room, and this usually accompanies the manifestation of something of great evil. Once he verifies there is an evil entity inhabiting Cindy, Father Darren decides to perform a solemn exorcism. It involves prayers, psalms, and general admonitions for the demon to give up its name. It's not going to give up its name willingly. If they're not prepared, they can destroy the person who's doing the exorcism, regardless of what your protections are. Be gone, ye hostile powers. Save me, O oh God. Hear my prayer, O oh Lord. Father Darren wastes no time. He must complete the exorcism if he wants to save Cindy's life. I will praise thy holy name, Lord. Glory be to the Father. I cast thee out, evil spirit, and every wickedness, and every encroachment of the wicked evil, and every phantom and diabolical demon. Every legion, by the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of Jesus Christ, I cast thee out. You're not taking authority upon yourself, but you're performing in the, in the name of Jesus Christ, which gives it all of its power. It is he who commands thee. It is he who shall return and judge the wicked, the living, and the dead by fire. Be gone. Be gone in the name of Jesus. Be gone in the name of Jesus. The rite of exorcism is concluded. Father Darren tests whether the demon is still in possession of Cindy. The body of Christ. It was a test to see if Cindy could receive the sacrament of Holy Communion. One of the things that I bring with me as a pre-sanctified host is basically the bread that's used in the Eucharist. Usually people who are demonically possessed, the demon who's in them won't allow the host to take part in the communion. It is clear to Father Darren that the demon still has Cindy in its grip. We'll have to repeat the rite. Behold the cross of the Lord. 
Be gone, ye evil spirits. Be gone, ye hostile powers. Suddenly, Claudia was paralyzed with fear. I was praying for protection for myself as well. I knew that our presence there, if this was truly demonic, that we could be attacked next. I, I felt something stand next to me, and it got very cold on my left side. We were trying to, to document it, and I saw a black shadow come from Cindy. It moved from Cindy over towards Claudia. There's something beside you. I thought whatever it was was trying to attach itself to me, that it might attack me, that it might affect me, that it might torment me later. The dark figure suddenly vanishes from Michelle's view. Cindy's behavior becomes more animalistic, a sign the entity is coming to the surface. And I looked at her eyes. They were very milky, very cloudy. They were not her eyes. You don't forget looking into the eyes of somebody you love and not seeing them and seeing something completely different. I love you, Cindy. We're gonna get through this. I command thee, spirit, whoever thou art, thou shalt give me a sign or tell me thy name. When a demon makes a full manifestation, the exorcist is now dealing directly with the demon. I command you, tell me by some sign or other thy name. Once the demon gave up his name, it allowed us to shift gears and deal with the demon directly. Amen in the name of Jesus Christ. We knew what we were fighting, and we were able to tell it directly to leave. Be gone. It is he who Cindy regains consciousness. But was the exorcism successful, or is she still possessed? Cindy, we're gonna get through this. Now that Father Darren can address the demon by name, he is one step closer to victory. And is now and never shall be. I felt relief, I felt release. Everything just changed. The air was, was lighter. The house was brighter. It's like I woke up and, and I looked around and saw all these people. You could feel just the presence of God. I felt for the first time in a very long time like there was not something behind me. Following the exorcism, Father Darren counsels Cindy. He offers her words of hope, but warns her that the demon could return. It all depends on the behavior, the mode of living, the prayer and faith life of the person involved. I believe this demon came into your life after your husband's passing and weakened you psychologically just as it did him. You have to be very aware and very diligent, especially when, when you have psychological scars, because they can open you up to these evil things. If you ever need any help, I'm here, no matter what. Anytime, day or night, just call me. If I hadn't had Father Darren come and perform the exorcism, there's no way that I would have been able to fight this thing. And I really don't know what would have happened or where I would have ended up if RGPI and Father Darren hadn't stepped in and given me the help that I needed. As a final measure, Father Darren blesses the home. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he finishes the blessing outside by the shed. In the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. At the very end, we made the sign of the cross on the door with holy water, guarding that house against the intervention of the evil. He commences the blessing with one final prayer of protection. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly ask. And do thou, O Prince of heavenly host, by the power of God thrust into hell, Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. As the prayer ends, Amen. Cindy senses the presence of her late husband 
watching over her. He was sort of a protector through all this. I feel like that he knows that we're okay and that he's okay. She realizes that Jim's spirit must have stayed around to warn her about the evil in the house. <sighs> the house is brighter after the exorcism, but it still reminds Cindy of her past. Believing they will never find peace there, she decides it's time to move on. It was a new life. It was completely starting over. It was in a beginning. We were finally able to have our lives separate from our old life. Chastity still has nightmares about her father's death. Well, that's the last of it. But she no longer fears them. After the exorcism, it felt like a weight has been lifted off. I felt like I had my mom back. I felt like everything was going to be OK. Cindy isn't completely free from the demons of her past. But at least now, she knows how to deal with them. Jason was there to tell me that I was going to get through this. That made me realize that there, there was a light at the end of, of all this, that I can fight this, that I'm not alone. And it helps to have people in your corner. That's it. Ready? 